This video will be talking about the Northern Mountain Clans, not to be confused with the Mountain Clans of the Vale. The Mountain Clans of the North are mostly located in the mountainous regions beyond the Wolf's Wood, in the high valleys and meadows, and along the Bay of Ice and certain rivers of the North. They follow the Old Gods, and it's believed some of the clans still practice Lord's Rite of First Night. There are roughly 40 clans, with the most powerful being the Wolves, and the most well-known including the First Flints, Norays, Burleys, Harclays, Littles, and Knots. Due to the threats of the Ironborn on the Norse west coast, particularly around the Bay of Ice, and the wildling attacks on the clans living near the Gift, the mountain folk have developed a strong martial spirit. However, the clansmen's weapons and armor are a bit more rugged and simple than the rest of Westeros. The chiefs and champions fight with huge, two-handed greatswords or axes in battle. They often ride on shaggy, undersized horses and wear waist-length coats of patched and rusted mail. The common clansman typically uses sling stones or wheeled staffs made of mountain ash. They are most likely to wear furs, boiled leather, or old mail. The mountain folk have been known to howl like wolves when attacking, and to disguise themselves with leaves, pine branches, and paint their faces brown to hide amongst the trees and attack. When the Starks conquered the many kings of the north, the mountain clans were included in this conquest. After being brought under the Starks' domain, they would remain fiercely loyal to them. But just because they're loyal to the Starks doesn't mean they haven't caused headaches from time to time. The mountain folk can be quite temperamental, and over the centuries the Starks have had to quell bloodshed or bring chiefs to Winterfell to hear their cases. The quarrelsome nature of the mountain clans has made Maester state they'd never band together without a Stark to lead them, which has been proven false, but does illustrate the clans have a lot of infighting problems. However, if there's one thing the mountain clans are really known for, it's their hospitality. The laws of hospitality are so important to the clans of the mountains that they often compete with one another to be the most open-handed host, which of course can cause more fighting if one clan ups another. Interestingly, the clans don't consider themselves lords or highborn, even though the Starks would call the clan chieftains lords. Instead, the clansmen style themselves as the clan name instead of Lord. As an example, the chieftain from Clan Wool would be known as the Wool, not Lord Wool. This practice is amusing when we see the other usages of it, such as when they refer to Lord Eddard Stark as the Ned. During the winter, many of the clansmen young are sent to Wintertown, and old men follow the custom of claiming to go out hunting to never return, in hopes they will give the healthier more food and a better chance at survival. Despite heading off into the blistering winter of the north, some of these clansmen are actually found alive the next spring. This is an amazing feat, to stay alive on your own during a deadly north winter, but the mountain clans are adapted to their harsh climate, as is most of the north. Besides knowing how to survive in the grim climate of the north, the clansmen also have two advantages when it comes to the snow and surviving it. First, they have lighter horses that are more sure-footed than larger horses, making traveling through snow easier. As well, the clansmen have bear paws, or as we know them, snowshoes, that allow them to walk on top of the snow. These shoes are made from bent wood and leather strips and tied to the bottom of their boots. Some even have bear paws for their horses. Lastly, I want to talk about the mountain clans in the books, so if you are a show-only watcher or not finished with the books, please stop listening. However, what I'm talking about involves things we're mostly done with in the show, Stannis' march on Winterfell, so it probably isn't too spoilery. Mountain clans in modern Westeros in modern Westeros, men from the Mountain Clans had fought along Robb Stark in the War of the Five Kings. However, most of their strength had remained in the mountains. Despite Ned Stark being killed, Robb dead, and the Boltons holding Winterfell, the Mountain Folks are still incredibly loyal to the Starks. The Mountain Clans have since joined Stannis' army and currently reside with his host. The number of clansmen that has joined Stannis is around 3,000 strong, but this number may be inflated due to the winter coming and the older men more willing to go out fighting for honor than being a burden or dying in the snow while hunting. Though Stannis won the Mountain Clans over by appealing to their traditions and courtesies, it's believed they mainly joined him so Stannis may help them reach their own goals, outsting the traitors Boltons from Winterfell and saving any Stark children. Ramsay makes a point of noting that if Stannis hadn't marched on Winterfell, the clansmen would have abandoned him, because their main interest lies in rescuing the Ned's girl, fake Arya, from the clutches of the Boltons. The clansmen are so loyal to the Starks, even after the Starks are mostly butchered and gone, that when some of Stannis' men begin to think the march on Winterfell is madness and just for some girl, Morgan Little corrects him saying, Ned's girl. Big Bucket Wool echoes, Ned's girl, and that they'd have the castle on her by now if Stannis' other men weren't such prancing Southrons who pissed their pants at a little snow. 
It is of note that while Stannis's men, mostly the Knights from the South, struggle to survive the snow on their march to Winterfell, the clansmen have snowshoes and are making it look really easy. They even begin to outpace the rest of Stannis's host, but are careful not to get too far ahead of the rest of the army. My favorite line by a clansman occurs when Stannis's host is resting for the night. The snowstorm is relentless. His men are even stabbing each other over who gets to sit closest to the fire, and horses are dying of exhaustion and exposure. Sir Penny wonders aloud whether an entire army had ever frozen to death in a winter storm. The clansmen just start laughing, and Big Bucket Wool responds, This is no winter. Up in the hills we say that autumn kisses you, but winter fucks you hard. This is only autumn's kiss. I love that the mountain clans don't consider what they're experiencing as winter, but just the gentle autumn's kiss. And this is how you know the mountain clans are rugged. Men and horses are dying left and right in the terrible storm while Stannis' army marches. Except for the flints losing one man, the rest of the mountain men in Stannis' army haven't lost a single person. Now, as the march continues and the storm doesn't let up, they do begin to lose horses. But even then, it's observed that while the knights from the south look gaunt, pale, and sick, the clansmen seem healthy. They are ready to bathe in Bolton blood and free who they think is Ned's daughter. The individual houses will be talked about in their own video, but which is your favorite mountain clan? Come back every Sunday and Wednesday for new Game of Thrones at Song of Ice and Fire videos. Giveaway winner is Mellow Cowism. I'll be messaging you soon, so keep a lookout. New giveaway starts this Sunday. There are only two posters left, but we'll move on to a new giveaway soon after that. In heart hurting A Song of Ice and Fire news, someone recently told George he was funny and should write comedies. George responded, Killing characters is easy. Comedy is hard.